Uh, today I'm going to talk to you guys about CCTP. Um, what CCTP is, is Circle's uh, cross-chain transfer protocol. So uh, it's a way to allow users to um, super easily move native USDC around the different blockchains uh, where it's supported. So um, to give a quick overview, um, so we we'll start at a super high level and kind of get deeper uh, and more technical as I go through um, and show you guys a um, some code walkthrough and a demo at the end. So first off, why did we build CCDP? So today, USDC is a really awesome utility that's used in a lot of different places, um, but it's spread out across a bunch of different blockchains. I think we're supported on like eight different blockchains today, and that number is just going to keep growing. Um, so if you have you know USDC on Avalanche and you want to do something with that USDC on Solana, it's not super easy to do that. There's really awesome companies and projects that are enabling things like that, like Axelar and other companies. Um, but as Circle, the issue of USDC, we're kind of uniquely positioned to make that uh, even easier. So when we were designing US or CCTP, uh, the first kind of design pillar that we focused on is that we wanted this to be native USDC. Uh, bridged versions of tokens are uh, hard to work with. Uh, they confuse users sometimes, and they're also a security issue uh, because they become a big honeypot on the source chain for hackers to try and um, you know, withdraw those funds. Um, so CDP is 100% native USDC uh, anywhere it's supported. Um, this, like I said, USDC has some sort of a fra liquidity fragmentation today, so we wanted this to kind of solve that problem. So we want to make it super easy if you have USDC on some chain like Avalanche to just move it over to Ethereum to do something on Ethereum. Um, we also wanted this to be fast. So some uh, bridges today take a long time, maybe hours, some even days, uh, due to different like security models or designs. Um, we wanted CCTP to be very quick uh, on the scale of minutes. Um, interoperable, so that's kind of the point of uh, this conference here, is we wanted this to be interoperable with EVM chains, non-EVM chains, basically anywhere that USDC is supported. Uh, so that's the goal, and we also wanted to make this uh, an easy to use and simple interface that's the same on every chain. We also wanted this to be many to many, so if you have, you know, there's not going to be one way to bridge Ethereum, USDC on Ethereum to Avalanche and a different way to Solana, like it'll all be one way and you can go from any chain to any chain. Uh, and lastly, we wanted this to be extensible. So we wanted it uh, to be easy to build on top of uh, from developers like you and companies like Axelar. Um, to really grow the ecosystem and just make it um, really easy to use and integrated with lots of apps. So going into a little bit of how CCTP works, um, at the highest level, this is what it looks like. Basically, some event happens on a source chain, in this case, Ethereum. Uh, our attestation service in the middle is listening for those events and signing attestations uh, that basically proves uh, that Circle says this event happened. Then we bring that attestation to the destination chain where it can verify uh, that Circle signed this attestation and it can trust that this event did actually happen on a different chain. So this model is a little bit different than a lot of existing bridges uh, because Circle, just like we are with USDC, is a trusted third party uh, in the middle. Uh, that's kind of necessary for this bridge because we're actually you know, minting and burning USDC, so we need that control in the middle. So. Going into a little bit of how USDC transfers actually work. So the first step uh, that I'm sure a lot of you guys are familiar with is calling the approve function on the USDC contract just to approve that, uh, to let the token messenger contract transfer some amount of USDC into the contract. The next step is to call deposit for burn. So this is the function that actually burns the USDC. After it does that, it'll construct a message that basically says we burned X amount of USDC. You should mint this same amount of USDC on a different destination chain. It passes that message over to the message transmitter contract, which emits an event like we saw a couple slides ago. The next step is to fetch an attestation from Circle's API. So the attestation service API will be public. Anyone can call it. Um, basically, you'll just hash the message from the event that's emitted on the source chain, 
uh, pass it into the API, and we'll return an attestation. Lastly, we'll go to the destination chain and call receive message. So we'll bring the attestation from step three and the message from step two, um, where the token messenger contract will decode the message, verify the attestation is valid, and then mint that new USDC and transfer it to the specified address. So we talked to about a couple different contracts in that slide. Um, so I want to go into detail of, for those a little bit. Um, so the first one is message transmitter. So CCTP uh, at the very kind of base level is just a generic message passing layer. So that's what message transmitter handles. Um, it sends and receives these generic cross-chain messages uh, and also you know, maintains nonces uh, to make sure we only receive each message once. The key functions here are send message and receive message, which do pretty much what it sounds like. Uh, there's also send message with caller, which allows you to specify a specific address that can um, call receive message on the destination chain. Stepping to a higher level uh, where we have token messenger, this contract actually handles the minting and burning of USDC based on messages uh, received from the previous chain or as well as constructing the message to pass to the destination chain. So the key functions here, deposit for burn, is what actually, like we talked about before, burns the USDC and constructs the message. And then handle receive message uh, is what deconstructs the message and mints the USDC that we want to mint. So pulling all of those together at a super kind of high level diagram, um, this is what it looks like. So it's maybe a little bit hard to see, it's small text, sorry, but uh, on the left, we have the source chain, where we start with the user calling deposit for burn. Uh, first, we go down to burn the USDC, and then we go up to actually emit the message sent event. There in the middle, we have the circle attestation service that's listening for these events, signing a message, and returning it to the user. And then lastly, on the right, on the destination chain, the user will call receive message on the message transmitter contract, which will then travel downward to eventually mint uh, the USDC and transfer it to the user. So now um, I want to step through uh, some code and look at kind of what this looks like uh, in action on testnet. So I've linked here our developer docs. Uh, if you guys want to take a look at this later, it's just developers.circle.com slash stablecoin slash docs. Um, so I'm going to step over to those and so we have kind of a quick start. Uh, so this kind of gives you uh, the bare steps needed uh, to actually transfer some USDC on testnet. So we link to a script here uh, that kind of has these uh, functions already defined with all the needed variables and stuff. Um, so I'm going to walk through that. So I've got that open in uh, VS Code already. We have a readme that kind of describes what you need to get it working. So the first thing we'll do here is install our dependencies with npm install. Cool. Uh, the next step is uh, to create an .in file, which will hold our environment variables. So these variables, uh, the first two are just some RPC URLs. Uh, we'll have to talk to a node on Ethereum and a node on Avalanche. Uh, the next two are some private keys, so you should just generate some throwaway addresses uh, to use for this on testnet. Uh, we'll have to uh, initiate a transaction both on Ethereum and Avalanche. Um, and then lastly, we have the re recipient address and amount, which is the amount of USDC that will get transferred and who will receive it. So I've already got that created here and filled in with uh, some RPC URLs and some private keys and an address. Um, I just generated these using an online tool. It's, it's just for testnet. Um, the amount here, notice it uh, has six decimal places. So the USDC contract uh, is denoted with six decimals. So this is actually just one USDC. Um, cool. So stepping over to the script, um, first we just have some imports and some utility functions and setup. Um, but going down a bit, the first thing we'll actually do is define some contract addresses. So these contract addresses are defined in our developer docs. If you go to technical reference, 
Um, or I'm sorry. Protocol contracts. We have our testnet addresses of where these are deployed. Um, so we have those defined in our script here. Token messenger on Ethereum, USDC contract on Ethereum, uh, a message contract on Ethereum, which just has a utility function that we'll use. And then lastly, the message transmitter on Avalanche. So after we initiate those contracts, um, the first thing we'll do is build our destination address. So in order to make this compatible with non-EVM chains, we don't use addresses. We use byte 32 parameters um, for our addresses. So we'll convert our Mint recipient uh, from a normal Ethereum address to bytes 32, basically just pads it with a bunch of zeros. Uh, but this is just kind of a utility function to make it easier for you. Um, and then we'll start with the transactions. So the first one we'll do is call approve on the USDC contract. So this lets the Ethereum token messenger contract move the specified amount of USDC out of the user's address into the contract. After we do that, we will call deposit for burn. So this is like we talked about what does the actual burning and constructing of the message. Uh, this is called on Ethereum, which in this case is the or source chain. Uh, step three, we want to actually retrieve the message bytes from the log. So when we call this deposit for burn function, uh, a message sent event will get emitted. So we'll have to fetch that event from the transaction receipt, uh, decode it into the message bytes, and then lastly we'll hash those message bytes uh, in order to pass that into the attestation API. So here we've got our message hash, our message bytes, and we'll do step four, which is calling the attestation service. So this URL is for uh, testnet. Again, this is defined in the developer docs. But basically, we'll uh, loop through until we have a valid and complete attestation. Uh, notice that we wait a couple seconds between each call to make sure we don't get rate limited. Um, but yeah, once that status is complete, we'll get out of the loop, and we'll have a signature. Then we'll go to the last step, which is on Avalanche, to actually call receive message. Notice we pass in the message bytes and the attestation signature. Um, so yeah, so that's pretty much the script and all the steps. So we can actually run that by running npm run start, and it'll print out a bunch of stuff and kind of uh, walk us through it. So the terminal text is, again, a little small, so apologies, but uh, let's see what it looks like. So that's the first step. That's the approved transaction receipt. So the approved transaction has just been run. Uh, now we're calling the deposit for burn function. So if we wait a couple seconds, uh, that transaction should go through as well. I think uh, Gurley testnet has been pretty uh, overloaded lately with all of the <laughs> uh, the whole layer zero uh, transfer stuff, so it's a little bit slower, but here we go. So we've got the deposit for burn uh, function just completed. We see our message bytes here, and we see our message hash here. So what we're doing now is uh, calling the attestation API uh, to actually fetch the attestation um, What's happening behind the scenes uh, with the attestation service is the service is listening for these message sent events on each blockchain uh, and then waiting for enough block confirmations to pass uh, to make sure the transaction's final. So on Ethereum, we'll wait uh, for block finality. Avalanche is super quick. Uh, we just wait for one block. Um, so yeah, so right now we're basically waiting for those blocks to be confirmed and then we should get an attestation here pretty soon. And then we will uh, send that over to the destination contract. You can also take a look too at this uh, transaction on Gurley while we're waiting. So you can see we transferred one USDC from the user's address into the message 
transmitter contract, and then we burned that USDC. Cool, so it looks like it just completed. So we got the attestation from the API, and then we called uh, receive message on Avalanche. So if we take a look at this transaction on Avalanche, you can see we mint uh, the USDC directly to the user's address. If we go over to that address, we should have, uh, yeah, six USDC. I forgot to look at it before, but I, there was five USDC before. Um, cool. So that's kind of what the walkthrough script looks like. Um, it has all the steps defined. You just need to define uh, the variables here in the .m file. And again, that's linked from our docs. So the last thing I want to show is uh, a demo app that uh, we built just to kind of show how this works on testnet. Uh, note that we're not actually releasing any kind of UI. Circle isn't. We're going to rely on partners like Axelar and other companies to integrate this with their existing bridging UIs and for developers like you to, to build new uh, integrations for it. So the first thing we'll do is connect our MetaMask address, or MetaMask wallet. So I've got that connected. Uh, right now, I am on Avalanche testnet. And we can see here, I've got eight USDC. If I jump over to Gurley testnet, we'll see I've got 26 USDC. So after this runs, I'll have 27. So go into Avalanche. First thing we'll do, uh, we want to transfer from Avalanche over to Ethereum. We'll input the address, which is just our wallet address on both chains. And then we'll do an amount. We'll just send one. And we'll get started. So we can skip the approve step because I've already run this a bunch of times with this wallet. So we've already called approve a couple times. Uh, so we don't have to do it now. And I've done it with a large amount. Um, so we'll skip that step. And now we'll just start the transfer. So. We have to approve one transaction. You can see here we're calling deposit for burn. We'll confirm it. So again, it's happening now. We're waiting for the attestation service to provide our um, signature. And then pretty soon here, we'll be able to uh, submit the transaction on Ethereum testnet. waiting. Again, I feel like all the test nets are being slow today. Let's see. And just to like, reiterate again, like uh, this is all native USDC, so we're not, you know, locking any USDC. We're not um, creating any bridge tokens. We're burning the USDC on one chain and minting it on another. Um, that's kind of the big difference with from CCTP uh, to the other existing bridges today. Um, Cool. So now uh, the transaction was received. So I accidentally clicked a button. Hold on. Cool. So now we have the transaction on Ethereum. So we need to switch our wallet address over to Gurley. So we'll do that. And then we'll call receive message. So you see here in the top, we're calling receive message. We'll confirm it. Um, once this uh, transaction goes through, we'll have our newly minted USDC. Cool. So if we take a look at our assets, we now have 27 USDC. If we jump over to Avalanche, we went from eight down to seven. Um, so cool. So that was kind of it for the demo. Um, jumping back over to the slides, um, I can open up for questions. Um, so yeah, you guys have any questions, either technical or non-technical about how CCTP works or anything like that? Cool. Yeah. Um, are Avalanche and ETH the only, uh, 
uh, are Avalanche and ETH the only blockchains that are supported right now? Yeah, so uh, we're planning on launching with Avalanche and Ethereum uh, on mainnet sometime in the first half of this year. Um, and then we'll be working later this year to support more chains. Um, I think we've announced Solana is coming um, and a couple others probably this year as well. So we'll slowly be adding more. All right, thank you. Do you have any uh, generic relayer service that uh, basically relays the test session for you or do us as developers have to relay it ourselves? Uh, so, yeah, so developers or the users have to actually relay the message to the destination chain. Um, like for example, in this demo, we have the user submitting that transaction, um, but as I'm sure you're kind of insinuating, like some backend service could do that for the user to abstract it away and just make it seem like it's one transaction. So, I think, I think he had one up here too. So, is there any way to avoid the receive call, or you? Uh, so that has to happen by someone. So that could be by your backend service uh, abstracting that away from the user, uh, or you can rely on the user to do it and kind of prompt them. Um, but yes, that's. Uh, again, kind of different from some existing bridges. There's no relaying service, uh, so we rely on uh, the developers or users for that. Sweet. If there's nothing else, can wrap up. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>